Welcome aboard the news review segment for today, the 29th of August, 2024. I'm particularly excited because as you can see what I'm wearing, Defend Media Freedom. It's a Joy News National Media Freedom Dialogues happening today. Don't change your dial. Stay with us throughout the day for that insightful conversation on how we can defend media freedom. My guest with me this morning, two actually, but in the course of the conversation, I'll introduce the other guest. With me right now is Shamima Muslim from the NDC Communications team. It is really good to see you again. And I was, Sister. And I was telling you how proud I was <laughs> yes. that you were the other, only other woman mm. who spoke during the NDC manifesto launch. That's yes. a great feat, isn't it? It, it is, and it's an opportunity that I don't take for granted at all. And as you have mentioned, that I would like to use this moment to... Um, express my deepest gratitude to the rank yes. and file of the NDC, the welcome that I have received, the opportunities that have come my way. I, I am most humbled and most grateful. Mm. And we will do all our best to work very hard and ensure that <laughs> victory would come December yeah. 7th, inshallah. Okay, I'll give Thank you another you. minute to take us to what's <laughs> top of your mind and yes. then get into the papers. Oh, yes. okay. I mean, what, top, what is top of my mind is this... this <laughs> white gold, this message of hope, of reset, um, this manifesto that we have launched um, over the weekend, which is sending reports across the length and breadth of this country and beyond the reception we have received on our manifesto resetting Ghana for jobs, accountability and prosperity for the majority, if not all, of Ghanaians, not just a clannish few. We thank you for the feedback we have received we are taking on board all the requests, all the commendations, and most importantly, we are energized by your promise mm -hmm. that you're going to ensure that come December 7th, you buy the NDC's message of hope and reset, not right. upgrading on faulty okay. and collapsed you know, <laughs> um, foundations, right. but truly resetting us back onto winning way. So thank you, Ghanaians, for the reception you've given to the NDC manifesto, and we commit as His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has said, he commits to leading by example and to holding his own appointees to very strict public conduct you standards. Have to land on that note yes, with me. Yeah. thank you very thank much. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> but on that note, let's take a quick break and we'll be back mm -hmm. and the conversations will begin. Stay yeah. with us. Many thanks for your patience. And joining us in the studio this morning is Ellen Amadeko from the NPP Communications team. Ellen, welcome to the program. You're on the AM show. <laughs> and I'll Thank give you, you um, a minute, a minute, half, two minutes tops to walk us through your to what's top of your mind. And then we get into our newspapers. Well, um, let me say good morning to you. Good morning to our viewers. This is my first time of being on the AM show. Mm. I just because you're a bit too early for my... <laughs> For my taste and the work and what I do, but I'm still here. So it's good to have you. my apologies for arriving a few minutes late. Mm. Um, pardon me. Yes, my thoughts are on the political climate mm. that we are building and addressing towards the elections in barely three months' time. And I would really want us to discuss the manifestos and the ideas that all political parties are putting across. As we speak now, we have, I think, three manifestos. Yeah. Um, the, the Great Transformational Plan from, from, the, Alliance, from the movement Alliance, Alliance for, for Revolutionary yes. Change. And then we have the NPP mm. one, and then we have the NDC one. Yeah. So, I mean, we are, we are debating on ideas. We are debating on the best party to move Ghana forward. Mm. We are debating on the party that has the policies to make our lives better and make our lives more comfortable. We are not debating on insults. So for some of us, we would prefer that we do our debates. You compare and contrast what everybody is bringing, and then we pick the best out of it. Okay. So for me, going forward, one of the things that I intend to do, and I intend to encourage everybody to do, is let's debate ideas. But that doesn't mean that if somebody decides to come with insults, we will not reply. We will reply. <laughs> but on, that, on, yeah. on, 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 mm. on, on a matter of principle, mm. I think we have a lot to discuss in all three manifestos. I hear the CPP says their own is on the way. 
Whether it will come, that is another matter. Right. And then yesterday, I also heard that there are 26 people who, have, who are on their way to filing to become presidential candidates. Um, I, I, most of them are going to be independent candidates. So far, that's that's yeah. what I hear. Yeah. So those independent candidates too, what are they bringing on board? They should also bring up yeah. the ideas and let's all discuss it fact, and choose I, the I, best for Ghana. Right. I keep saying that it's no longer about, I mean, the competition is not about a former president and a sitting vice president. It's about what each political party and their flag bearers is offering and how we, the voting population, well, are absorbing these since, promises and dear, you know, policies that you're is, proposing. So it's, yeah, it's, course, it's, you know, uh, it is a competition between the former president. <laughs> and a certain vice president. I mean, we've because moved past we that haven't moved past policies, that. No, 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 we haven't. Manifestos. It's the two people, their personalities, mm. then their parties and their manifestos. No problem. We are it's, not taking it out. It's because there are two, there are two individuals who are into this. Well, I don't agree with you on that one. They are part of it. Okay. Let's get into the newspapers. I'll start with the Daily Graphic. Um, on boosting regional security, we must unite to fight terrorism. That is according to... The president, Ekufado, he's saying this to African nations. And let me read a bit of that. President Ekufado has called on African nations to bolster regional mechanisms and enhance collaboration by sharing intelligence and best practices to create a safer and more secure continent. At the opening of the second international defense exhibition and conference in Accra, <coughs> that was yesterday, um, the president highlighted the interconnected nature of security threats across the continent, such as terrorism and violent extremism, which often transcend national borders. And, you know, in his address, he also underscored the role of regional organizations such as the African Union, the ECOWAS, and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development in enhancing security across the continent. Let me start with you, Shamima. What's your assessment of our current security um, status as we speak and, the, you know, the efforts that we are putting in with all these border conflicts bordering around us in the neighboring um, countries? I mean, um, thank you, and good morning once again to your viewers, and um, thank you for making time to join us this morning. We truly appreciate that you take these platforms seriously, and we take you seriously as well, and so we would always commit to ensure that we engage in a very civil discourse, and whilst demanding strict accountabilities from those who wield power and those who are in control of our natural resources. They can't run away from such strict accountability. Mm. Security matters, especially this election year. Yeah. I read um, a very comprehensive article by Colonel Festo Zabwaji, you know, drawing attention to the fundamentals of any secure society on the basis of uh, justice and equity, um, peace will always prevail. Mm. And Ghana has a pride of place within the sub-region with regards to uh, longevity, longevity in terms of maintaining you know, a, pe a relatively yeah. peaceful country, especially after we ushered in the 1992 constitution. Mm -hmm. And I always say that uh, His Excellency, the late Jerry John Rawlings, has been the most stabilizing you know, force in our democratic dispensation. Um, because B PNDC, NDC, and the Fourth Republic, which was bequeathed under his, you know, leadership, mm. when we he 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 saw a very peaceful transition into a democratic regime, and we are still in that Fourth Republic, 32 years on. Ghana has always led the way within the sub-region. Like you rightfully said, all around us is chaos. Yeah. In the midst of the chaos, even with our internal you know, chaos <laughs> and, and, and distress, we still manage to hold this country together. And that's what we are hoping that we should be able to do. Okay. That institutions, security institutions must recognize this country that has been built over years, this country that we have stabilized together um, by mutual cooperation, where the interests of the Ghanaian and the state of Ghana should at all times be supreme over and above any partisan or selfish interest. Thank you, sir. That is why, mm. why there's no time. Now, I thought well, this is the main issue yes, we are discussing. Yes, we are, we are. But right. I want so to take if I can just land. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I'm these, these matters are not matters. We've done nearly two we, minutes already. Well, but these, these are <laughs> yeah. important matters. They Go don't on. lend to 
quick reflection. So I'm just saying that, especially in this election year, the security agencies must know that a lot is dependent on them. We expect a very nonpartisan approach in, 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 in the management of our security. The Electoral Commission, the Peace Council is calling on the NDC to sign a peace pact, and our General Secretary and our party chairman and the NDC have all indicated the basis on which we are going to engage in any peace uh, you know, business. The Electoral Commission, as we are being made to know, has a lot of questions to answer with regard to their conduct of the processes leading up to December 7th. We have BVD machines that have gone missing from the custody of the Electoral Commission. People have been arrested holding BVD machines. N huge numbers of people have been transferred outside of their polling stations without their knowledge. And we are drawing attention to these things that portend trouble into the nearest you know, couple of months. In right. fact, today is exactly 100 days to the elections. There is no time for anybody to engage in any monkey business. We expect true fidelity to the constitution of Ghana, free and true fidelity to the laws and regulations that govern a free, fair, credible elections. We expect you. nothing other than a free, fair elections come December 7th. Let me follow up quickly on, on something you just said. You said the NDC is ensuring that in order for them to participate in any peace pact or yes. agreement, there are certain um, demands that you're making, yes. those six demands yes. on implementation of the invest, um, recommendations or Mayawa so yes. and all that. So what are you doing to ensure that we maintain the peace, aside those six demands you're making? Or is it a case that if you want peace, prepare for war? Is that what you're doing? We haven't said that. Just as my so sister has referenced here, that what we are doing is ensuring that we are vigilant about the process mm. and we are transparent about what we find out. You would know that Dr. Omani Boama, who is our head of elections, mm. has been giving the public regular updates regarding everything that we find out. And now I'm going to encourage you. You are speaking about defending media freedom. I was, you know, I am still a media person. And I will be speaking briefly about later on about what is in the media and why we as media people must project and highlight these things. Right. Because these are the triggers. And don't let it look like it's only the NDC because okay. you cover these stories. Let, and so you must also it. demand yeah. the same answers from the Electoral Commission, your from the security agency, and that be the vigilant. Right thing be exactly. Done according to and your, beyond demanding, right. we will ensure that the right thing is done. We're not going to sit and fold our arms and say okay. that Electoral Commission, just do your work. Do your work, and we will ensure that you do your work. Thank That's you, all Helen. we ask for. It's not Helen, too much to ask. Your take now. Well, the, 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 the president that. was speaking at um, what, 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 what uh, conference was he speaking at? It was the second international defense exhibition okay. in conference. So it, it means it's a conference that had other people from the sub-region. Yes. I believe it's the defense ministers and all those uh, who had come around. And um, let's not forget that as much as we are in Ghana, we are also located at a quite volatile part of the world. For the, I mean, for the past 10, 15 years, mm. on the seas of West Africa, we've had so many pirate incidences. And then when you go upland um, or inland in West Africa, all the way to Mali, and then you start coming down to Burkina, to Ivory Coast, every single country around us have gone through a state of insecurity at a point in time in the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. Ghana is the only oasis of peace in this, in this region. So if the president is asking that with our neighbors, we continue to make sure that West Africa drops its name of being a volatile state, a volatile area, um, it's possible to have peace in your country for 32 years. We have done it. We are a shining example. Yes, we have issues. Mm. But then the point is we are able to solve our issues in-house, in-country. This election is going to be what? Our fifth under this particular dispensation. I think so. It's our fifth. Yes, it's our fifth election. And in all five elections, we didn't burn. We didn't kill ourselves. 
we didn't. Oh yes, yes, yes we did. We I mean, compared to <clears throat> our neighbors, and because we have rules and regulations, when such issues come, there are ways that we solve it. So President Nana Kufado is saying that we need to keep that. And our neighbors need to learn from us because you can only develop when you have peace. Now we are 100 days away from a crucial election. As at now, by December 7th, 2024, under the fourth Republican dispensation, the NDC would have had 16 years. The NPP would have had 16 years. And as much as I agree that there are other people or other parties that are also part of these elections, let me be very honest with you. I do not think that they will make much of an impact. So the competition is between the NPP and the NDC. The electoral, who, who actually proposed the peace pact matter? The, 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 peace, national, the peace national Peace Council. Council. The National Peace Council is, is, is a creation of our constitution. There was a reason why the framers of our constitution decided that there should be a National Peace Council. Now, the NDC is telling us that before they sign a peace pact, we have to fulfill certain conditions, 100 days to elections. I will be very magnanimous and tell the NDC that signing a peace pact does not guarantee that you'll be peaceful. So if the National Peace Council is suggesting that for all of us and for for, for having better, a better environment for this election, we should sign a peace pact. And you say you won't sign. It's not by force to sign a peace pact. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it is but not. Ellen, the, the MPP though? says, I don't know what their challenge is. No, 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 I, I don't no, know what's The what, challenge with the implementation with, 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 of some of the recommendations. The, which the recommendations? They're asking for. What's the challenge in... I have no idea meetings? what the challenge is. Whatever it says, I am sure they are going through a process and it will be done eventually. But if it's 100 days to elections and you say you won't sign a peace treaty, it's not by force to sign a peace treaty, honestly. I just think that we are, we are, we are just, you know, stirring a storm in a teacup. The MPP says we will sign. If we sign and they won't sign, fine. The point is, we will have these elections, just like how we've had the four previous elections. We will go through it. And if the people of Ghana decides that it's the MPP that should continue, Nothing will stop the NPP from continuing. That's if the people story. of Ghana decides that it's the NDC that should come and take over and continue with the, four, uh, the, 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 the sort of mess they presided over how many, eight years ago, mm -hmm. no problem. Nobody is going to kill anybody over this. But it is just good for national discourse that going into an election that is of such crucial importance, all of us come together at peace and sign. Why the NDC say they won't sign? I don't see why we are all bothering ourselves. Because nobody will follow them to fight if they decide to fight. They a fight or an argument is between two people Ellen. or three people. Right. If you decide to come with an argument and we say we won't do, no fight will happen. Okay, Ellen. So, so as for the MPP, right. we, are, we are assuring Ghanaians that going into this election, it is not under the watch of Nana Adadankwe Kufuado that Ghana is going to go down the dreams. Point there's me. no what way, there's no way that's that, going to what happen. What I'm trying to say is that the, the, you yourself said that the election is between the NDC and the NPP and the National Peace Council was created out of this constitution to do some of the things that you're seeking to do now. Do, are you saying that the NPP um, thinks it's of no consequence at all if the NDC decides that if these conditions are not met, they would not sign? We don't think so because it's been, it's been, we've so had, it's of no consequence we've had this issue running, whichever issues they, they brought about. Mm -hmm. The only one I remember is the Ayawaso West mm -hmm. going issue. It's been to court. People have pulled at it. The government keeps saying that it's a process we are going through. There's now, an issue if, about the EC as well. The what VVDs about the EC? That were missing. Yes, but people, people have been Recently, caught. Recently, we even heard that someone in Sawam was found mm -hmm. with a BVD. And the person has been caught. Yeah. When you commit a, I'm coming. When, when you commit a crime, when somebody commits a crime, and then the uh, law enforcement agencies get in, and the person is caught, has it, isn't that a problem that is being solved? I would have a problem if those machines had gone missing and nobody had been found to have it. So I'm sure the EC is also doing what they have to do to make sure that we have a, a peaceful and safe elections. You cannot stop criminals from committing, uh, committing crimes. Mm -hmm. What you can do is to apprehend them when they do commit it. Right. And I think the police and the EC are doing 
fine about it. But let me be very honest with you. Whether the NDC decides to sign a peace pact or not, it doesn't I don't think it will make you. any impact on this election. Let's that move away that the people of Ghana would bit, vote yeah. for who they want to vote for. Points made. Let's move away from the politics and do some gender issues. Um, this is a call from Action Aid country director saying that let's intensify the fight against child marriage. And it's very important. Recently we saw, I mean, not too recent, a few months ago, a child in um, the gang community is being installed or in, um, being betrothed to a chief. Let me get into a bit of the story and then we'll discuss. The country director of Action Aid Ghana, a non-government organization, John Nkwa, has called on the government and other stakeholders to intensify the fight against child marriage to safeguard the future of young girls for the sustainable development of the country. And he said curtailing young girls' education at that young age had an effect on the country's economic growth and sustainable development, as well as efforts being made to achieve the goal five of the sustainable, that's the SDGs. And he said there was a need for the Ghana Education Service to enhance or institute a comprehensive sexuality educational curriculum to enable young girls to be aware of their sexual rights at an early age to defend them. Quote, in the Upper West region, the situation is even more alarming with child marriage rates reaching approximately 36%. What are we doing about it? And as women, how do we even feel about 36% recorded, um, the rate at which children are given off into marriages mm -hmm. in the Upper West Region? I'll start with you, Shamima. Well, you know, I come from Upper West Region oh, okay. as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a well Sure, woman. you can read um, a bit. So these stories worry me to no end. Mm. And at the basis of all of it is, is poverty and the inability of parents to care for their children. Mm. I mean, um, many girls are forced in the evenings to go and seek shelter outside of their homestead mm. because there's just no space for them. And there was a story some time back uh, um, regarding the issue of sanitary towels and yeah. how Sex many girls pads. Yes, yeah. um, were given. Um, Upper West was also mentioned as one of the regions that had, you know, um, these problems, um, girls were losing their virginity because they couldn't afford sanitary pads. You know, this is exactly what we talk about when we say that there are consequences to mismanaging an economy and there are qu direct consequences when um, governments fail its people by failing to ensure equitable distribution of um, national resources and lifting up communities. Um, if you take a look at our manifesto in the highlights, because this year, a lot of vulnerabilities have been occasioned as a result of our collapsed economy. Vulnerabilities um, involving women uh, losing their incomes and its replications on the sustenance of families because, again, there are um, more women-headed households in Ghana and more women within the informal economy. Vulnerabilities occasioned by the collapse of um, a lot of businesses and jobs, which has now also affected the aged and the elderly. Vulnerabilities that have been occasioned by the uh, very insensitive haircuts, which has deprived old people of their savings and their investment. Mm. Many people have been led to their early grave as a result of their inability to buy their drugs or go to the hospital and go through some medical situations. Mm. Vulnerabilities that have occasioned and pushed 850,000 Ghanaians into poverty, as you have reported on this channel, mm. as a result of the NPP and Nana Baumia's mismanagement of the economy. <laughs> Vulnerabilities that have pushed children into poverty. You would know that there are many children who are on their own, no guardians, no parents. They are virtually living off the streets and their situation has become even more precarious. Children who are not supposed to be on the street are on the street trying to eke out a livelihood for themselves. Vulnerabilities that have deepened the poverty levels of persons with disability, and, it, and then young people who have been disenfranchised, no jobs, not at 2.9 million youth per the Ghana Statistics Service are not in employment, they are not in education and they are not in training. This is a recipe for disaster. It's a powder cake waking, um, waiting to erupt. Why are we in this situation? The NDC's manifesto is centering as a matter of priority and urgency because of these unprecedented level, levels of um, you know, vulnerabilities. We are centering the issues of young people 
centering the issues of women, centering the issues of persons with disability who already deal with so many you know, discriminations and who already find it difficult to just live because of the, our spatial you know, organization and how inaccessible many public services are to these groups of people. So your approach is empowering the youth, empowering people Our economically, and they can cater for... Yeah. Centering social inclusion, mm -hmm. centering social protection, mm -hmm. and centering representation, mm -hmm. and expanding opportunities for all these groups of people, which will include these young girls who are having to be given off to marriage because their parents just can't afford to feed them, okay. to shelter them. So it all These comes down real, to poverty. Real, it's, yeah. it's poverty and also mm. the disappointment and the betrayal of those who are at the helm of affairs. Because governance is about solving people's problems, problems and ensuring you. that you lift communities up. So it's a sad story. Right. And if you read our point 14, mm. we have promised that we're going to develop a protective framework for children to ensure safety, mm -hmm. enforce parental responsibility, because it's also a shared responsibility, right? Prevent child trafficking, child labor, and harmful cultural practices, and address the issue of missing children and support family reintegration. And, and harmful, so the, and harmful, harmful cultural practices. This is false is, under yes. this category. All right, I'll come back to you in a bit, Shamima. Ellen, what's your take on this issue? I know, in fact, I've heard um, Dr. Baumia talk about free sanitary pads to girls in senior high schools and all that. Well, it's a policy what? that NDC um, implemented before, mm -hmm. and it's also in, it's one of our social intervention policies to provide okay. free, free sanitary, sanitary pads. pads. So we've okay. done it before, and we are on course to do All it right. again. Come Ellen, your take now. Next year. Um, let me correct myself. I've just been corrected that the Peace Council is a creation of statute okay. and not of, of constitution. Mm. My lawyer just corrected me. Thank you for the correction. Um, on the issue of the child marriages, yeah. child marriages have been with us for eons, for generations. Mm. Well, I remember when I was growing up, um, I remember the, I had a classmate who after GSS, we, all we heard was that she was married. And she wasn't even coming from the north. She was from down south here. Mm. Uh, I was born in Techiman, in the, in the Buno East region. Those days it was a Buno Half region. I grew up a bit there, even though my parents don't come from there. They went to work there. Mm. So I was with classmates who were very brilliant young ladies who could also had gone to the St. Roses that I went to and all the other, the other situations mm. that were shipped off to marry. This particular classmate of mine honestly did not come from a poor home. Oh. She didn't. Mm. It was, I believe it was a cultural a thing. Cultural thing. Uh, apparently she came from a royal home and she was betrothed at that time to an up or a future chief. Okay. Why did I bring the story up? I'm trying to substantiate that. Mm -hmm. As much as I agree that in certain parts of this country, it is poverty that pushes some parents to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's also remember that we still have cultural practices that still pushes for these things. FGM, female genital mutilation. Yeah. People who engage in it do not engage in it because they are poor. They engage in it because it's a cultural practice. That's something that has gone on for years. We've had child marriages since whenever. I want to ask, when the NDC was in power, and let's not forget, I'll keep on retreating it, that the NDC and Mr. Former President John Mahama has been in power before. It is not as if they are a new entity. Mm -hmm. We have seen their governance. We have seen what they can do. They have a track record behind them that we can refer to. What did they do when they were in power to make sure that child marriages practically disappeared from Ghana? The question I want to ask that is that, did, did they do anything that made sure that child marriages was down to zero? And because His Excellency Nana Akufuado and Dr. Baumia are wicked people, in the last eight years, child marriages have come back again? Yes, I don't so think that is true. It's been with us since eons, so, right? Exactly. So when so, you sit here and you mm. tell me that because of poverty mm. and a failed economy, mm. 
People are sending off their children to go and marry. That is a very unfair statement. Is it in the last eight years that people are sending off their children to marry? When you were in power and you had full, 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 full rights to power, full control, people were still sending off their children to go and marry. So moving forward, what are we doing to make sure that such incidences are totally taken out or it doesn't happen at all? A lot of parents are irresponsible because the state cannot track whose child is this. If we had a system where when you had a child right at the hospital, that child is given a number, that child is identified as your child, and that child is put in a system, it is easy to follow up on that child. That's why Dr. Baumia is saying that we need to get ourselves digitalized, get our Ghana cards right and make sure that we can put a child to a parent. Because if you are, you are put to a parent, we know who your mother is, we know who your father is, and we are able to track your progress in life in this country. It will be difficult for somebody to ship you off and go and marry you off at, at 12 years and 13 years. Okay. All along, we had no idea of even keeping track of our children. How many children were born of Ghanaians and were in Ghana? How many children came in from our neighboring countries that most of them are being used as beggars on their way? We simply had no system. Dr. Baumia, through his Ghana card system, that the NDC also raised a full defense against from the now uh, 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 chairman. Okay. When he was general secretary, telling all Ghanaians and their supporters not to go register for Ghana card. That is the basis for making sure that we keep track of every child in this country. That's one question I wanted to ask about the free sanitary pad matter. It's good. Because, look, when you have lived in the places I have lived for, as I said, I was born in the Bunahafi region. I lived there. I have worked there. Practically half of my adult life, I have worked in that, that area. And I know what these girls go through. When free SHS was introduced, one of the critiques of free SHS was that we have parents who can afford to pay for the education, secondary education of their children. Why have they been added to the free SHS? There are children who can, there are parents who can afford to buy sanitary parts for their children. How are we going to differentiate between those who can afford? and those who cannot afford sanitary pads. Okay. Because if the children, if the children are not, if the young people do not, those who come from rich homes do not deserve government's help in education, I think that they should also take them off the free pad system. From what I hear from Shamima, the last time I heard her talk about this, she said it was going to be a wholesale distribution of, of, of parts for all children, whether, I don't know whether it's just the public schools or the, or the private schools. But right. there are some of the girls who don't need it because okay. their parents can afford it. So what parameters to, are we putting is it, in place is it for, for all to make sure that and private schools included? To make sure that we, we, we right. take those people out. She, she, she responds. Uh, well, I'm, I'm here. I, well, I'm not sure um, where you heard me, but yes, I've been speaking about it. So maybe you um, misunderstood how what I communicated. It's a policy <coughs> for Excuse me. junior high school and senior high school girls. Free sanitary parts for these girls in these schools. Now, Public if, if your parent has sent you to school, like they send off their children to school, even under free, age, free senior high school, mm. paying and preparing them with amounts of 3,000, 4,000, and you know, preparing food because the food in the schools that are being served is not adequate. When your parent prepares you to school and can afford a sanitary pad for you, you would have a sanitary pad. The policy is that parts will be in school for every Whoever girl in it. need of part. Okay. It Whether is private such an or important, public it's public school. Public school. Public school. Okay. It is such an important intervention. I've been a menstrual hygiene ambassador for the past 12 years, working with DES every year. We're doing the, you know, um, commemorating the menstrual hygiene management day. Girls are losing contact hours as a result of um, the unavailability of sanitary materials. The schools themselves do not have proper sanitary facilities. 
there are bathrooms or washrooms that are for both males and females. There is no water. So they will not come to school for at least a minimum of five days every month. You know, in some communities, they can't even cross the river to go to school. You remember that story that came up, um, River of Finn, where the school was on the other side of the river. So these girls who lived, you know, across the river mm. couldn't go to school. One, already they were, or, <laughs> they didn't even have sanitary materials. Yeah. And cultural norms was also preventing them. So their BCE results were always abysmal even though they were naturally more intelligent per the supervisor's own you know, admission. Mm. But because they lost vital contact hours because of a natural phenomenon like having their periods, they were failing in their exams. It is such a critical intervention that we can't even begin to ask questions, who needs it, who doesn't need it. Right. And if I, I send my daughter context, to school, yeah. I will put the part that she wants in her, in her, in her chop box. If she goes to school and she doesn't need the school sanitary pad, she won't take it. So let's not be burdened by those things. Let's just ensure that there are parts in school for girls who would need them, who can come for these parts. And a point that both of you have made, I mean, nationally, this is according to UNICEF, mm -hmm. there's been a decrease in the percentage of girls married before the age of 18. However, in some rural and northern regions, like the story even indicated, child marriage rates remain higher due to factors such as one, poverty, cultural tradition, and lower access to education. So just to come back to you, Ellen, is it the case? I wanted to that, also clarify a few things because you I'll, asked I'll come, me a I'll come back in a bit. Let me, let me learn this question. Is it the case that, I mean, if you do a qualitative comparison, if children or if young girls come from homes who are empowered economically, intellectually, educated, they don't have, they don't struggle to meet basic needs such as shelter, food to eat, and all that, there would be leaning towards these cultural practices that we all agree that are outmoded. Oh, well. Because you said, you said, you made the point that it's not I because of poverty per se, I but I there are other I said factors like not cultural. Because of poverty mm. alone. Right. So I never said poverty okay. was not part of it. Point taken. I just gave I an example of somebody I knew who came from a good home, who because of cultural issues got married off okay. early. But so the I mean, the natural, the, the, the natural inclination of any human being and let me even use that Ghanaian cultural situations, is that when you were a woman and you were educated, you have access to education. You have access to food during the time that you're being educated. Yeah. You, have, you have access to your basic needs. You, 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 do, you will not feel any inclination to go get married because you need those things. Mm -hmm. You would wait your time, go through your processes, grow up and marry if you so wish. Yeah. So definitely, the need for education, and education, we cannot under any circumstances underrate education and the girl-child education. Okay. Because more girls, the more girls who get into school, the more protected they are from these, from, from these yeah. cultural issues. Okay. So definitely, as much as poverty is part of it, giving them access to education and making sure they stay in school also keeps them away Thank from you. these I mean, ma ma yeah, I'm, I'm happy that Ellen speaks about you know, keeping girls in school, mm. because that's really one of the surest way of removing families out of poverty. Do you see it? Mm. Poverty is 99.9% .9 the problem. And, you know, cultural norms just reinforce existing vulnerabilities. And, you know, um, Ellen made reference to uh, the fact when I made a point, she said, if it's the last eight years that the phenomenon of child marriage, it can't have been the last yeah, eight yeah, years yeah. that the phenomenon of mm. child marriage is. But if you heard my premise, I, I um, numerated the exacerbated vulnerabilities of already vulnerable groups occasioned by the last eight years of MPPs and Nana Baumia's mismanagement. Point clarified. Because, we do, we, let's do some other stories. Right. So Ioko wins... Mm. Yes. I'll give you 10 seconds to do that. 10 please. seconds. Yeah. Anyway, the, the issue, the, the NDC could not <laughs> ever have been against the Ghana tribe. Right. Professor Dumont is the first, uh, first you know, um, uh, that CEO of the National Identification right. Authority. How are you against something that okay. you envisioned Points and you made. started? Now, this is oh. still the Daily Graphic on page 30. Yoko wins four Audit Agency Excellence Awards. And the Economic and Organized Crime Office received four major awards at this year's Audit Assessment Awards organized by the Internal Audit Agency. And it was adjudged the best audit committee 
best ERM complaint institution, best internal audit unit, and best head of covered entity for exemplary leadership. Let me skip to the part where it says, since her assumption um, of office as head of the agency, COP Mrs. Adodankwa has been credited for engineering transformation in accordance with the Economic and Organized Crime Act 2010 that established Yoko with collaborations with international agencies, including the Federal Bureau of Investigations of the United States, the City of London Police, etc. And in 2023, the institution made a total recovery of 232 million Ghana CDs for the state being direct and indirect recoveries from proceeds of crime. Ellen, how do you feel about this story and this, uh, you know, a judgment of four awards in excellence for Yoko? You know, before I get there, let's not belabor the point. Mm. The NDC did not start the Ghana card process. And the NDC, their current chairman, actually campaigned against people. I mean, let's not well go Well said, Ellen. We, we have, have five minutes. We have everything to... Yeah, let's, 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 let's get into there. Yoko. Um, the, 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 the... Yoko has been the, awarded Yoko, four Yoko, awards. Yeah. I am excited about it because mm. it's led by a woman. And for me, every institution that is led by a woman, that excels is, is a feather in the cup of pushing for more women to be made heads of institutions and to be given the opportunity to lead. And let me underline the fact that I said institutions that are doing well mm. and women who excel mm. at, at, at these positions. Mm. So a big congratulations to, uh, is it DCOP yeah. Mamitiwa? COP. COP. Yeah. COP Mamitiwa. For, for, for the good work done right. and encourage her. You know, let's, when you go through her history, she's also had a, a lot of, a few patches along. If you remember when she was mm. part of the, um, is it NIB now? The, the, BNI, she had, yeah. She's gone then. through quite a lot with her career too. But she's done so well with it. I mean, it encourages people, especially in the women, especially in the security agencies. So well deserved. Sure, oh yes, well deserved. Right. I think she's, she's done her, her bit. Okay. And we should encourage more women in the security services to aspire to, 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 Great. to higher, Salima, higher What do you think levels. about this? Well, for our words. Since to mm. the, the EOCO, mm. EO, Yoko. Yoko. Mm. <laughs> Yoko boss. I agree with that. The, the award is not going to her as a oh, no, that, she's the head the of the yeah. institution. Okay. She's the head of the I'm just clarifying. Hey, madam, I mean, she's the leader. No, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, the affirmative action that we keep speaking about, on the matter of women who lead, who, um, who are competent and who bring change. I mean, University of Ghana, I always proudly say, is today um, headed by women from chancellor to vice chancellor. Um, the judiciary is doing quite well, even though there are still some challenges with regards to you know, up upholding the rule of law right. and ridding itself of perceptions of, of bias. Mm. EOCO has a lot of work to do still. Ghana, I hear, is becoming a hub for illicit financial flows coming through. And when you have a, a country whose economic performance is really not that admirable as we have seen from everything that's happened in the past couple of years, and yet you see the rise of high-rise buildings and commercial properties, you must ask yourself, where is the money coming from? And so we always need to follow the money. There are concerns that Ghana is becoming a hub for illicit financial flows, either from ill-gotten wealth, you know, which is being laundered into all of these other, you know, prime properties, or um, people are bringing um, ill-gotten wealth from outside of the borders. So I think that these are some of the things that EOC, e, e, EOCO should be minded about. There are also um, major governance issues that if you took a look at the NDC uh, manifesto, we intend to really look at, for example, the operation um, oral operation, recover what all is, loot, is a major intervention that mm -hmm. we hope will strengthen our governance and our accountability systems. And I think that the Yoko must also be interested in all of these things. Okay. When we spoke about the asset declaration regime mm -hmm. and how we haven't quite effectively dealt with it. You see, big business, big politics and politicians must be willing to first be accountable before we can ask anybody else to be accountable. We must again take a second look at the asset you know, declaration regime okay. and people must ensure or institution, the, the asset declaration regime must be more transparent than it is. 
we should know what people are going to public office with and if their lifestyle is not in conformity with what we know they are being paid these are all questions that we must, you know, be interested in. You think Yoko should be doing in. more, can be doing more yes. than it's actually and doing. Well, you know, that I, there's I, I, one last story and then we have to go. With, yeah. with yeah. internal yeah. auditing and go performance monitoring, please, I just want to squeeze mm. this in. Mm. Half of the time, we try to bolt the stable door after the, ha the horse has been halted. If you <laughs> listen to happenings at the Assurances Committee, right. even the, um, the, 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 the that public hearings, in the not, not that okay, specifically, right. but the work of the Assurances Committee, as well as um, the public hearings we usually have around public institutions, half of the time, the inquiry is being made on um, governments that are out of power. And sometimes we don't get these monies back. The Auditor General has uh, work to do in terms of actually retrieving some of these funds that are wrongfully paid right, um, paid right. to people. Mm -hmm. So let's just make our institutions work. And His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is promising under our good governance okay, project. Uh, to Ellen, I'll come to you to reflect on this. But after I've done the last story, and okay. make them work. Thank you, you I'll come to, to you. I'll come to you. So on the Bagri Dam spillage, farmland, because this is important, farmland submerged by floods in the north and farmers who have their farmland along the downstream portion of the White and Black Volta rivers are bearing the brunt of the spillage of excess water from the Bagri dams and the, the um, Kopianga dams in Burkina Faso as large tracts of the land have been submerged by floodwaters. We have that looming um, food crisis coming on in. The Minister of Agriculture is saying that we, want, we need 8 billion Ghana CDs to salvage the situation and now there's this Bagri dam spillage we were told that the impact will be felt after a week or seven days eight days and already farmlands have been submerged i'll give you two minutes each and then we have to go i'll start with you ellen well um i believe the ndc can put more credence to their manifesto on taking off or taking back um public looted property. The oral yes, operation. By making uh, sure that all the we find yeah. Madame Sedinam Tamaklo of Maslock fame and then she, <laughs> she, she comes to serve her tip because it was under their watch, under the watch of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama that all that matter happened. And I keep on saying that Nelen who is saying it. It's the court of competent jurisdiction. That says she's a thief. So when you have people that you have appointed who steal from us, steal from women, Still for market women. And then tomorrow morning you come and tell us that you are having or, or, or oral whatever. I mean, you, 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 do, not, you do not have you, find you, you do not have any moral rights. You, you don't have any moral right to talk about it. Because definitely you yourself and your appointees do not have any, any good history about about keeping the public purse. Mm. About the Bag Bagri Dam incident that we all know mm. every year that the Bagri Dam will be spilt mm -hmm. so far as the, the, the dam overflows in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. We do not have control mm -hmm. about what the Burkina Bays mm -hmm. would do, mm -hmm. but we do have control about what happens downstream with right. us. Yeah. And just as NADMO and the authorities did, they warned our farmers, they warned all of them that they should, be, they should, they should move out of the way. I haven't heard any news whether we've had any casualties, whether the people... Some lands have been submerged. Yes, people but then whether people were destroyed. able to Not move yet. away. Yeah, yeah, they yes. moved the people. And but I mean, the people I usually that, farm... That is what the Polugu Dam was supposed me, to fix, is the it people not? Usually, I'm rushing you because we are out The people time. usually yeah. farm there because the, the, land, the land there is fertile for farming. But then we should also look at it. Whilst the Polugu issue is being sorted out, and it will be sorted out, mm. Every single year since when, since the Bagri Dam was, 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 was what, um, built, mm -hmm. we've been having these incidents. Right. So I think the ministry, the ministry of our great, the ministry of our great and Nadmo have, have done well by up. making sure that yeah. we move our people out of danger. All right, thank you. Shamima. The, the MPP needs to go because uh, I think that their dissonance <coughs> is, is phenomenal. It's unprecedented. We are talking about a government. You see, I said here that I'll take a president who under his watch, members of his government can be prosecuted for Ferdinand alleged wasn't wrongdoers. Under, under you know, Mahama's I'll take watch. a government. You've been in power for eight years. She wasn't you prosecuted. cannot find her. She, no, she I'm was not saying that. There were people yeah. who were prosecuted mm. under 
the um, administration of John Dramani Mahama. I would take such a president any day than a President Okufado who will write a DSCC letter to his minister is done. who is with his holding so millions have about of you don't, dollars. You don't have any more is holding the millions of dollars. It's for so it's LN. You don't it's have LN. your LN. But said the number has, has been you know has been judged. I allowed and she stole money. Please you have no she didn't steal it. No what has my have you been able to prove that she's stolen your money? And Madam Ellen uh -huh. is telling you Ghanaians mm. that they don't take you seriously. Madam Ellen is, is telling Ghanaians please, can I that Ellen, a Ellen, president and a who is what? Ellen, 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 Ellen,